Goody drives all day. No. Oh no. This but this is good. the new moment. See? Oh, See? Believe. That's what it's all about, baby, right there. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome aboard the Terra ED Golf Club train. One of the greatest golf courses ever built. Why they let me in, I'll never know. But let's give you some context before we get to the video. Rick Kane, private equity investor, basically wanted to build the dream golf experience for him and his buddies. Well, he did a pretty damn good job. He brought in Jim Warstaff to help him do that. You'll meet Jim soon. And here you have it. Terra ED Golf Club. I woke up with my hands a little like this. Very similar to some bucket list rounds I had this past year. But I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to be nervous today. There's nothing to be nervous about. I know a lot of people don't get the chance to play at a place like this at Tar ED. And so my goal today is to make sure you feel like you're playing with me, like you're the one playing. So I probably should say welcome aboard the channel. I can't believe we're here, but uh, I can't wait. So I'm gonna do everything I can to enjoy a round like this, no matter what happens, no matter what weather comes through, where my ball goes, and hopefully help you guys learn a lot about where we're at today. So hope you enjoy it. Built in 2015, the architect, who else? Then one of the best in the game, Tom Doak. You may know Doak's other masterpieces. I'll list them here. Um, and soon to be TRA Links North. All right, let's get you to the golf. The one thing that's never happened to me on a golf course before, before playing golf is be asked by the caddy if I want still or sparkling water. First time for everything, I love it. Super cool, thank you guys. You're welcome. Help people understand, I don't think a lot of people understand the like different roles and players that goes into creating a club. So like a lot of people know of the architect, but the developer, mm -hmm. right? Help them understand the like main roles superintendent like everyone you need to make something like this happen something like this come together sure so you know there are there are so many people involved in this you've got of course ownership investors uh, uh, the master developer yeah. golf course architects uh, you've got the build superintendent and grow in superintendent which is you know, vitally important yeah um, but it, it doesn't really come together in a good way without every component. So you've got to have right. great land, you've got to have capital, yep. and you've got to have the right people. And it's yep. very rare that you get all three of those together at the same time. And that's why it's so rare to see you know truly great places, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Parts for the boys? Yeah. Wow. That was one of our first t-shirts. <laughs> so this is the power of vocalization. I joked about hitting it in the bunker in the middle of the green just for the experience, and I hit it into the bunker in the middle of the green for the experience. So pro tip, maybe uh, the next time you vocalize, pick something a little bit more positive like the middle of the green. But man, what an amazing hole. Going straight from a welcoming, open, beautiful short par four to this almost infinity green just sitting there around 150 yards uh, looking right into the ocean. What, an, what a beginning to an epic round of golf. What makes them say, is it more on them to say yes? Or is it a cost prohibitive thing for some courses where they don't work with that, those architects? Or how does the selection work? Well, they're both, uh, you know, they're, they're a handful of architects right now that are, you know, I, I, I think the, the, the it, I'm probably right the now. it architects. <laughs> uh, but, you know, for, for Tom and for Bill and Ben, you know, they typically will only work on two or three projects at any given time. Okay. So they need to be really selective. So they really look for the best land. Yeah. And then, of course, the development uh, yeah. team that's there, the investor or the owner, uh, they're looking for the best situation uh, because they, they're they not like uh, some architects who have built hundreds and hundreds right. of golf courses. They're selective. They're very, very picky about what they so work on. So it just on. comes down to the site, just like it does. Yeah, the, the site developer. and then the other, the other thing. The other yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 got it. Exactly. So keep in mind, this round is as relatable as it gets for you viewers and golfers out there, okay? I'm nervous as hell, even though I told myself not to be. 
and I start topping some drives and not sure where the ball's going off the tee. So I'm just trying as much as I can to see the scenery and swing smooth. But man, from an architectural standpoint, Parrot is everything that you would imagine. We're moving into so much variety, which I love to start the round. You've got a short par four, open, inviting, short par three to start. And now you've got this uphill par four. It's just epic at every turn. All right, so this is a good lesson for everybody. No matter how squirrely you're hitting it off the tee or whatever you're doing that doesn't meet your expectations, remember, all you gotta do is have one great hole or one great shot to take away with you for next time. And this, birding number five at Terry Eady, it's a great one for me. a perfect reminder for everybody you can't give up as cliche as it sounds i thought i hooked my five iron layup start getting down on yourself and it's a layup come on i make birdie also i should say as you see jim rorstep hitting shots throughout this round i've been a draw guy my whole life i've never wanted to hit cuts more than after watching jim hit these pure baby cuts all day jim helped start Tara Eady with uh, the owner Rick Kane and you couldn't ask for a better host to take you throughout this experience. Sand game. Bungie game. Oh. Sand game's uh, pretty good right now. <laughs> Maybe I should just hit it in the sand so that I'm comfortable. <laughs> Now, it's been widely publicized, and I'll say it again here, just for context, in case you didn't know. Terra Edie had arguably the best debut of any golf course in the world, skyrocketing to number six in the world rankings after opening, which is absolutely unheard of. So you've already can probably tell through the front nine how special Terra Edie is from just a beauty and architectural standpoint. It's framed by these rolling dunes, these singular standing pines. You can literally hear the sound of the crashing waves and it's just such a laid-back intimate vibe a club this exclusive usually has some arrogance to it um but terra ed does not everybody is laid back and super friendly they want you to enjoy and appreciate you know this gem that they get to experience all the time so i've seen rankings a little bit all over the board on golf digest they're number six in the world's 100 greatest courses i've seen as high as number two um but it's New Zealand's really first ever American style private club. The membership is kept small. And you know what? It is just special. It's special. Let's get you to this back nine as we finish this incredible run of holes. The one thing Jim told me at lunch yesterday, which I wouldn't have expected, I didn't even think about, is for people that are making golf trips, you know, you've got Scotland, Ireland, Bandon, all these different places you can go to get a lot of golf in. The beautiful thing about New Zealand is I flew from Los Angeles, only a 12 hour direct flight overnight. I landed in the morning and then yeah, I'm a day ahead so I lost a day, but it's only three hours behind. So if I land at 7 a.m., it's 10 a.m. in Los Angeles the day before. So in regards to like jet lag and just going straight into a trip, it's actually an amazing option. And it's kind of turned into this like golf destination, if you think about it, because you've got Cape Kidnappers, Corey Cliffs up top, and then we're gonna play TRE Lynx tomorrow, which is Jim and his team that started Tar Edie, now created two resort courses that anyone can play, that's public. So kind of an underrated, I think, amazing golf destination for the travel, ease of travel, and all the amazing things you can do in New Zealand. So, if you haven't thought about it, maybe you should. So should I do a giveaway with this, or should I bring this home myself, pack it in the suitcase, and plant a little Tara Edie bush in my, my home? What do you guys think? Comment below, let me know. <laughs> Shitty drives all day. No, no, no. Drive a little for it, man. This but this is good. a new moment. Move yeah. on. This is a good one. Oh. See? Oh. See? Oh. Believe. 
believe. Here we go. Arch That's what it's all about, oh. baby, right there. <laughs> So we skipped a couple holes due to a little bit of rain that came in, but essentially the back nine starts off with a bang, right? You've got 211 yard par three, then a reachable five, uh, mid-level, actually longer par four, 468, and 13 was such a fun hole. You saw me being hesitant to hit driver because I didn't know where my driver was going all day. Jim said, this is a new moment, pump me up, hit my best drive of the day, Missed my birdie putt, but great par, great hole. And again, like I said in the Tiari Lynx video, I think par threes are a great indicator of the quality of the course. I think a lot of times you remember the par three. And the par threes at Terra Edie reminded me of the par threes at Cypress Point. That is not hyperbole. They are the same level of unbelievable beauty, amazing architecture and subtlety and complexity, yet also so simple. This is 15. Back on the train. Finally, we're back aboard. Look at this par three right here. You know, we, um, Bruce uh, McCulloch has been in my group both times. So um, I send him a box of Heinekens and okay. he, uh, he always says, Jim, are we going to get some Heinies today? <laughs> So, uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of fun. We definitely celebrate them and uh, have a couple of cocktails in the clubhouse. Yeah. And then we do, a, we do a really cool thing with a, a beautiful photo of the whole uh, in this, this uh, brass club oh, cool. that's then engraved with uh, what, See, what I knew was there'd the, be, I knew what there'd was be the, something. Yeah, what was the date, uh, the whole of the yardage. And then in the golf shop, we've got another one, a, a, a brass bag. It's okay. got little clubs and it says the person's name and oh. the date and the yardage. So it's we, we definitely like to celebrate. What a place! It. What yeah. a place to get an ace. It's definitely a good place to have one, but there isn't a bad place that I've found so far. I was just telling Jim I can't believe it's 18 already. It wouldn't be golf if Stella didn't get a groove back when you're finishing around. Best drive of the day on 18. A uh, nice little three-quarter wedge here gets me on, and I just it's hard to even. This round went so fast because I was trying to stay in the moment, but every hole was just so beautiful and so iconic. It was like, you know, I think I think my biggest takeaway from Terra ED is two things. One, it's the people and the feeling of the place. And two, it's the level of architecture and golf holes that you see. So one, the fact that this place is so exclusive yet they're so happy for you to be there. Everyone was treating me like I was one of them. And that was really cool and that doesn't happen everywhere. So that's one. Two, I think any golf course would love if they had one of these holes at their golf course. One of these world-class holes at their golf course. Terry Eady has 18 of them. So everything you read about Terry Eady, it's true. Now, one thing I should have to say, our tweet that went crazy and made Terry Eady get a million emails. Sorry about that, guys. Um, the old thing that everybody knew about Terry Eady was, yes, it's super exclusive. Yes, you probably can never play here, but they had this kind of unwritten rule that anyone in the world is allowed to come here once. Um, they felt like the property is so special. If you're in New Zealand, you deserve to experience it. That is actually no longer the case. I joked with the team that it's probably my fault. So apologies to all you guys out there. You can roast me in the comments. But for now, the club is only taking guests of members. The one time and then you can never play again thing is actually no longer a thing. Um, that's all I know. I'm sorry if it was my fault. Um, but hopefully through this video, you got a taste of the experience. And it was definitely one for a lifetime. Now remember, there's also good news that comes with this. It might sound like a bummer if you if you feel like you can never play Terra Edie, right? And you're just itching to get out there. I'd say the good news is you kind of can't, okay? It's not Terra Edie itself, but TRA Lynx is the same land. And TRA Lynx, I arguably had just as much, if not more fun at, because it's, it's even more playable, it's more dramatic, and it's designed, the North Course is being designed by Tom Doak. Tom Doak designed Terra Edie. So 
I can't wait to see the North Course. I'm going to have to fly back out there just to see the North Course after October. But I'm just saying, don't feel let down because if you want to play this level of golf, go to TRA Links down the road. I promise you, it'll be just as special.